Such wondrous power God to his saint will lend, though present in his angel, who shall go before them in a cloud and pillar of fire, by day a cloud, by night a pillar of fire, to guide them in their journey and remove behind them while the obdurate king pursues. All night he will pursue, but his approach darkness defends between till morning watch, then through the fiery pillar and the cloud, God looking forth will trouble all his host, and craze their chariot wheels, when by command Moses once more his potent rod extends over the sea. The sea his rod obeys, on their embattled ranks the waves return, and overwhelm their war. The race elect, safe towards Canaan from the shore, advance through the wild desert, not the readiest way, lest entering on the Canaanite alarmed, war terrify them in expert, and fear return them back to Egypt, choosing rather inglorious life with servitude. For life to noble and ignoble is more sweet, untrained in arms, where rashness leads not on. This also shall they gain by their delay. In the wide wilderness there they shall found their government, and their great senate choose through the twelve tribes, to rule by laws ordained God from the mount of Sinai, whose gray top shall tremble, he descending, will himself in thunder, lightning, and loud trumpets sound ordain them laws, part such as appertain to civil justice, part religious rites, of sacrifice, informing them by types and shadows of that destined seed to bruise the serpent, by what means he shall achieve mankind's deliverance. But the voice of God to mortal ear is dreadful. They beseech that Moses might report to them his will, and terrors cease. He grants what they besought, instructed that to God is no access without mediator, whose high office now Moses in figure bears, to introduce one greater, of whose day he shall foretell, and all the prophets in their age, the times of great Messiah shall sing. Thus laws and rites established. Such delight hath God in men, obedient to his will, that he vouchsafes among them to set up his tabernacle, the Holy One with mortal men to dwell. By his prescript a sanctuary is framed, of cedar overlaid with gold, therein an ark, and in the ark his testimony, the records of his covenant. Over these a mercy seat of gold between the wings of two bright cherubim before him burn seven lamps as in a zodiac representing the heavenly fires. Over the tent a cloud shall rest by day, a fiery gleam by night, save when they journey and at length they come conducted by his angel to the land promised to Abraham and his seed. The rest were long to tell how many battles fought, how many kings destroyed and kingdoms won or how the sun shall in mid-heaven stand still a day entire, and night's due course adjourn. Man's voice commanding, sun in Gibeon stand, and thou moon in the vale of Alion, till Israel overcome. So call the third from Abraham, son of Isaac, and from him his whole descent, who thus shall Canaan win. Here Adam interposed, O sent from heaven, enlightener of my darkness, gracious things thou hast revealed, those chiefly which concern just Abraham and his seed. Now first I find mine eyes true opening, and my heart much eased, erewhile perplexed with thoughts what would become of me and all mankind. But now I see his day, in whom all nations shall be blessed, favor unmerited by me, who sought forbidden knowledge by forbidden means. This yet I apprehended not. Why to, the, to those among whom God will deign to dwell on earth so many and so various laws are given? So many laws argue so many sins among them. How can God with such reside? To whom thus Michael? Doubt not, but that sin will reign among them as of thee begot, and therefore was law given them to evince their natural pravity, by stirring up sin against law to fight, that when they see law can discover sin, but not remove, save by those shadowy expiations weak, the, cla the blood of bulls and goats, they may conclude, some blood more precious must be paid for man, just for unjust, that in such righteousness, 
to them by faith imputed they may find justification towards God, and peace of conscience, which the law by ceremonies cannot appease, nor man the moral part perform, and not performing cannot live. So law appears imperfect, and but given with purpose to resign them in full time up to a better covenant, disciplined from shadowy types to truth, from flesh to spirit, from imposition of strict laws to free acceptance of large grace, from servile fear to filial, works of law to works of faith. And therefore shall not Moses, though of God highly beloved, being but the minister of law, his people into Canaan lead, but Joshua, whom the Gentiles Jesus call, his name and office bearing, who shall quell the adversary serpent, and bring back through the world's wilderness long-wandered man, safe to eternal paradise of rest. Meanwhile, they in their earthly Canaan placed, long time shall dwell and prosper, but when sins national interrupt their public peace, provoking God to raise them enemies, from whom as oft he saves them penitent by judges first, then under kings, of whom the second, both for piety renowned and puissant deeds, a promise shall receive irre irrevocable, that his regal throne for ever shall endure, the like shall sing all prophecy, that of the royal stock of David, so I name this king, shall rise, a son, the woman's seed to thee foretold, foretold to Abraham, as in whom shall trust all nations, and to kings foretold, of kings the last, for of his reign shall be no end. But first a long succession must ensue, and his next son for wealth and wisdom famed, the clouded ark of God, till then intense, wandering, shall in a glorious temple enshrine. Such follow him as shall be registered, part good, part bad, of bad the longer scroll, whose foul idolatries and other faults heaped to the popular sum will so increase incense God as to leave them and expose their land, their city, his temple, and his holy ark with all his sacred things, a scorn and prey to that proud city whose high walls thou sawest left in confusion, Babylon thence called. There in captivity he lets them dwell the space of seventy years, then brings them back, remembering mercy and his covenant sworn to David, to David, established as the days of heaven, returned from Babylon by leave of kings, their lords whom God disposed, the house of God, they first re-edify, and for a while in mean estate live moderate, till grown in wealth and multitude. Factious they grow, but first among the priests dissension springs, men who attend the altar, and should most endeavor peace, their strife pollution brings upon the temple itself. At last they seize the scepter, and regard not David's sons, then loose, lose it to a stranger, that the true anointed King Messiah might be born, barred of his right. Yet at his birth a star, unseen before in heaven, proclaims him come, and guides the eastern sages who inquire his place to offer incense, myrrh, and gold. His place of birth a solemn angel tells to simple shepherds, keeping watch by night. They gladly thither haste, and by a choir of squadroned angels hear his carol sung. A virgin is his mother, but his sire the power of the Most High. He shall ascend the throne hereditary, and bound his reign with earth's wide bounds, his glory with the heavens. He ceased, discerning Adam with such joy surcharged as had like grief been dewed in tears, without the vent of words which these he breathed. O prophet of glad tidings, finisher of utmost hope, now clear I understand what oft my steadiest thoughts have searched in vain, why our, ec great, why our great expectation should be called the seed of woman, 
Virgin Mother, hail, high in the love of heaven, yet from my loins thou shalt proceed, and from thy womb the Son of God, most high. So God with man unites. Needs must the serpent now his capital bruise, expect with mortal pain, say where and when their fight, what stroke shall bruise the victor's heel? To whom thus Michael, dream not of their fight, as of a duel, or the local wounds of head or heel. Not therefore joins the sun manhood to Godhead, with more strength to foil thy enemy, nor so is overcome Satan, who fall, whose fall from heaven a deadlier bruise disabled not to give thee thy death's wound, which he who comes thy saviour shall re-cure not by destroying Satan, but his works, in thee and in thy seed. Nor can this be but by fulfilling that which thou didst want, obedience to the law of God imposed on penalty of death and suffering death, the penalty to thy transgression due, and due to theirs which out of thine will grow. So only can high justice rest apaid. The law of God exact he shall fulfill, both by obedience and by love. Though love alone fulfill the law, thy punishment he shall endure by coming in the flesh, to a reproachful life and cursed death. Proclaiming life to all who shall believe in his redemption, and that his obedience imputed becomes theirs by faith, his merits to save them, not their own, though legal works. For this he shall live hated, he blasphemed, seized on by force, judged and to death condemned, a shameful and accursed, nailed to the cross by his own nation, slain for bringing life, but to the cross he nails thy enemies. The law that is against thee, and the sins of all mankind, with him there crucified, never to hurt them more, who rightly trust in this his satisfaction. So he dies, but soon revives. Death over him no power shall long usurp. Ere the third dawning light return, the stars of morn shall see him rise out of his grave, fresh as the dawning light, thy ransom paid, which man from death redeems, his death for man as many as offered life. Neglect not, and the benefit embrace, by faith not void of works, this godlike act, annuls thy doom, the death thou shouldst have died in sin for ever lost from life. This act shall bruise the head of Satan, crush his strength, defeating sin and death, his two main armies, or his two main arms, and fix far deeper in his head their stings than temporal death shall bruise the victor's heel, or theirs whom he redeems, a death like sleep, a gentle wafting to immortal life nor after resurrection shall he stay longer on earth than certain times to appear to his disciples, men who in his life still followed him. To them shall leave in charge to teach all, na all nations what of him they learned and his salvation, them who shall believe baptizing in the prolific stream, the sign of washing them from guilt of sin to life pure, and in mind prepared, if so befall for death, like that which the Redeemer died, all nations they shall teach, for from that day, not only to the sons of Abraham's loins, salvation shall be preached, but to the sons of Abraham's faith, wherever through the world. So in his seed all nations shall be blessed. Then to the heaven of heavens he shall ascend with victory, triumphing through the air over his foes and thine. There shall surprise the serpent, prince of air, and drag in chains through all his realm, and there confounded leave. Then enter into glory, and resume his seat at God's right hand, exalted high. Above all names in heaven, and thence shall come when this world's dissolution shall be ripe, with glory and power to judge both quick and dead, 
to judge the unfaithful dead, but to reward his faithful and receive them into bliss, whether in heaven or earth. For then the earth shall all be paradise, far happier place than this of Eden, and far happier days.